A structural engineer needs a good library to call on due to the broad range of topics that they need to cover. It's really hard to remember everything and it's really a big breadth of knowledge that we need to know. So it's always handy to pick up those books whenever you need them. And to build this library can get quite expensive. So you really need to do your research before picking up any book. I'll be going through the top books that I use on a regular basis. These won't necessarily just be associated with Australian standards, but also more broad ranging with structural engineering as well. Although some of them are more associated with Australian standards, as that's where I do most of my engineering work. My name's Brendan, your structural engineer based in Australia, and I produce videos around structural engineering. So if you do like that topic, topic please subscribe. I'm gonna break it down into a series of sections, which I'll put bookmark down below so you can skip ahead wherever you want. They'll be broken down into concrete, into steel, into general engineering, some books that I just enjoy, especially as a structural engineer, and just some other organizations that I assign to that produce good literature that will help you out. And they produce this normally on a monthly basis. Let's start off with concrete. And this is something that I do quite a lot. We have this one book, I like to nickname the Concrete Bible. It's really something that I pick up and use almost every day, especially when I'm designing a concrete structure, especially in the more complex solutions. It's done by Warner, Reagan, Hall and Fawkes, and they produced a lot to do with the Australian standards and they actually helped write the Australian standards as well. There's actually two versions of this book, so make sure you pick up the bigger book. As this is more complete book, it has both RC and PT design in it. So if you pick up the other book, you may need to pick up two of them but it covers all the way through. So you've got worked examples and you've got all the way through from basic design to more complex designs as well. This is something that I recommend even at university. So if you are going through university, this is a really a must have for any structural engineer. Alongside that, obviously with reinforced concrete, you have a lot of detail you need to do. And the Concrete Institute puts out quite a lot of good literature around this. And one book that I'd actually recommend you pick up is the Detailing Handbook. Now this goes through how you're detailing concrete, so your lap splices, gives you general rates and also general concept designs and how you put the structure together. Another good handy one, which is also from the Reinforced Institute of Australia. They have put uh, the detailing guide for reinforced concrete for earthquake design. It really works in conjunction with this book. Now that one from SRICA is free, so you can actually pick that up from the web. You can actually search around and find it. But you will need to pick up this one from the Concrete Institute. Again, this one's probably more so when you've gotten into practice and you're starting to detail those reinforced concrete structures. It really helps you detail that and look through how you're gonna put that structure together. So these are two books that I would recommend you as a structural engineer pick up when you are detailing more of those reinforced concrete structures. They're just a couple of things that I helps me out that when I'm doing my concrete designs, I pick up most days whenever I need to. So I'd recommend you pick that up too. Now, another book that I recommend, now this is more associated with precast buildings. Now it is similar to reinforced concrete buildings, but it adds the added complexity of the prefabrication process, which adds all these joints and connections through your whole structure. This book not only just covers precast, it also has some good guides for designing reinforced concrete as well but it is mainly focused on that precast design. It's put out by the National Precast Institute of Australia, and it's really a really good book to have. It's a hardcover and it's really quite big. Now, I would probably hold off for now, try and pick it up, as it hasn't been updated to the 2018 code, and that should hopefully be coming soon. So just keep checking up on their website and wait until it picks up, but it's a really good book and you will use it quite regularly, especially with that precast design. If you're starting to move into design, where you're starting to mix the complexities of in situ concrete and prefabricated elements, I would recommend picking up Time Dependent Behavior of Concrete Structures. This is a really good read and goes into quite detail on how to design these structures. It also provides worked examples as well, so you can go step by step on how to put the designs together and the elements you need to consider. It is quite a big book and expensive as well, and it's a hardcover, so I'd only recommend picking this up if you're moving in these type of complex structures, but it's really a godsend when you do need to use it. So there's a series of books that I recommend you pick up when you're starting to do steel design. And the first I'd recommend is the Steel Designer's Handbook by Gornick, Tilnyon, and Sinam. Now this is to do with Australian standards, and it goes through 
from basic design all the way to the complex designs as well. So it gives you connections designs, gives you bridge bearing designs, gives you column designs. And if you are designing buildings, this is really the go-to book that you need to pick up. Now I haven't got really anything more complex than that as I haven't really broached into the bridge design and the complexities of that, but I'm sure there's a number of series that you can actually pick up. And if you do have any other books, especially around steel that you'd recommend, please note them below. It'd always be good to see. Another book that I associated with this is from the Steel Institute of Australia. And they've produced a series of books to do around connections, specifically around connection design. And connection design is really where all the complexity of steel design occurs. So these books is in quite a big series and it's quite a big envelope folio that you can pick up from them. I would recommend you going to the Steel Institute of Australia and picking up these. As they really produce that down to basics guide on how to design them, giving you all those worked examples and even giving you tables on capacities as well. No structural engineers library would complete without a couple of general engineering books they need to pick up just for those basics and general guidance on the broad range of topics that a structural engineer can have. And one book I'd actually recommend you pick up, that's The Structural Engineer's Pocket by Fiona Cobb. Now this is a book based around the UK, however, it's even useful here in Australia. It does provide guidance on general design, detailing, on the broad range of topics that you can do as a structural engineer. It even provides one of those span tables and some of those span, span ratios, column sizes, now these don't really change depending on whether you are in Australia, US or even the UK where it's designed for. As structural engineering and physics doesn't really change depending on where you are around the world. Sometimes you have some changes to safety factors and load factors, however the general sizing of elements is the same no matter where you are. So I would recommend even here in Australia is picking up this structural engineer's pocket handbook by Fiona Cobb will help you out and will provide those general guidance wherever you need. That's similar to the book by Sleevey, the design book. Now that's it. this is quite an old one as you can see here. I'm using this more as a coffee table book now. But it provides all those general designs so when you're trying to do those soil stabilizations, you're trying to do your steel designs and different different designs, pavement designs, it, it provides that general guidance. So if you are need to pick up and you need to have a quick guidance, it's always a must have to have some of those general engineering books on hand. Another general engineering book, but it's more on the complex side, is Rock's Formulas of Stress Strain Curves. Especially when you go to those more complex designs, this is something that you can't live without really. It provides those detailed computations that you would not think of and you would not know how to approach any other way. I've never found a book other than Rock's book that covers those complex torsion designs and covers those more complex areas which you may need to do as a structural engineer. And when you do need it, you need it straight away. So it's really hard, you'll be trying to search online to try and find some sort of literature about how to do this. So it's always handy to have that book on hand whenever you can. So now let's move on to some organizations that actually sign up to, that actually produce quite good literature and they produce actually monthly magazines. The first one I'm actually going to mention is the Concrete Institute of Australia and I actually just recently presented them doing a punching shear presentation just last Wednesday. And they produce a ma monthly magazine on concrete design. And this is around Australia, but it provides a really good detailed book. They even provide case studies and they provide even theses and literature and cover a broad range of topics here in Australia. It's actually a really good read and especially if you're into that concrete design, I would recommend you trying to sign up or even talking to your company whether you can get a hold of these magazines because they put some leading research inside this magazine so they use it more as a design technical journal as well. The Concrete Institute also produces a number of seminars based around concrete and they provide good technical guidance there as well. So I would recommend you signing up and looking at those seminars as well. Another one that's added probably about left field and that is the structural engineer, especially for here in Australia. Now, the structural engineer is probably seen as one of the gold standards of structural engineering around the world. They do a number of things. They produce a magazine, a monthly magazine, into the detailed design for structural engineering, providing guidance, questions. They don't just focus on just the structural design, they also focus on the business side, the management side as well, and really everything to do with structural engineering. It's a book that I actually recommend you signing up to and going there. Here in Melbourne, there's an iStruct D group that you can sign up to. 
they generally produce free seminars. They're not actually happening now because of the current environment with COVID. However, they do produce good technical seminars that you can go to there for free. So you get a couple of benefits by signing up to the structural engineer. You get this monthly magazine. They also produce a exam. There's an eight hour exam and it's considered to be the gold standard of structural engineering if you manage to pass it. So these are two organizations that I highly recommend you signing up to, especially if you're really into structural engineering. If you're actually in university, these organizations potentially offer you a free sign up. So you can actually see what they offer and see whether it's worth you paying that money when you move into the professional field. But I would recommend doing your own research as it is a big expense. But you do need to start building that literature as engineering is a broad topic, can't just be solely reliant on what you know or relying on those softwares as they are black boxes. So it's garbage in, garbage out. So if you don't understand the base design or can't work out where to get them, you don't know if you've produced a good design that is correct or not. So picking up a good set of books that gives you a solid understanding of structural engineering is always important. Is there any other books that you would recommend? Please comment below. I was always looking to pick up good books, especially on a broad range of topics. Anyway, if you did make it to this point, you obviously enjoyed this video, so please give it a like and subscribe and ding that bell so make sure you get every update. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye.